In today's episode, we're going to be going through 10 major states and deciding who is the best rapper from each one. And listen, we didn't lie to you in the title. If you guys do enjoy this video, drop more states in the comment section that you'd like to see us do in the next coming videos. But listen, we have 10 of them, Lou. Let's start off with California, bro. What do we got for this it's one? It's funny because like when we think of West Coast hip hop, like obviously Oregon or Washington, that's part of the West Coast, but... We kind of just make it slip our minds because California is really the hub for West Coast hip hop. And I mean, there's so many rappers to choose from. We have Tyler, the creator. We have Vince Staples, Kendrick Lamar, Roddy Rich, Baby Keem, Anderson Park, Schoolboy Q, Absol, Blue, West Side Boogie, Larry June, Childish Gambino. Yeah, like the, the list, list goes on. Yeah, goes it on goes and on. on, bro. So, I mean, what are you looking for here? Because I feel like Kendrick is not a bad answer just because, I mean, really who's who the fuck's on this on his level but at the same time i feel like in terms of who's currently making the most like quintessential west coast hip-hop albums it's maybe vince staples especially looking at like ramona park like that feels like a g-funk influenced rap album you know I, what listen, I mean i have vince staples like as a close second i'm gonna be quite honest but with it's you, kendrick, especially, right? no no especially yeah, come on it's kendrick <laughs> like we're gonna lock we're gonna it gonna in around here. and by the way guys if you are confused this is rappers currently like in their prime like at the moment 2023 time of this recording so like dr dre or let's say you know Tupac. ice cube wouldn't have been able to make this list they stopped making music like that so i mean for kendrick i think it is a lock but i mean tyler and vince staples vince staples were really my close seconds i mean vince staples is been on an incredible run with self-titled back in 2021 comes back with Ramona Park broke my heart two really nice concise albums that hit close to home for the west coast so I think he could be considered then Tyler has been on one of the best three album runs that I've seen in modern rap history and I love both of these artists takes on rap music but the dominance of Kendrick Lamar is not only prominent within California it's probably prominent within the rest of the industry so I think it goes to Kendrick. Yeah I think that is a lock but it's funny that like Kendrick hasn't made necessarily a west coast feeling album since like 2012 you could argue well to pip a butterfly had major elements it had yeah that's and, true and it, it, it did implemented it, it into did. it and like you'll always find those types of hints in all of his catalog so yeah. i mean okay listen kendrick's definitely locked but let's go on to new york so this is the mecca of hip-hop this is where it all started and listen honestly they probably had the most stacked roster out of any other state besides california i feel like this was really the state but that here's had a the lot. thing is i feel like the new york scene from like the 90s and the 2000s just remains undefeated like when you're looking at the roster that we have mm -hmm. actively yes it's still strong but i don't think it's a hot take to say that it's like seriously declined over the years it has in declined my opinion, but the longevity has been prominent so example i'm going to come in with nas for this conversation because i still think he is the best current new york yeah, rapper but at the moment i just feel like you know new york was always seen as the mecca for hip-hop and nowadays it feels like it's the ugly cousin to the South. Like, like it's, it's in the shadows no, now. And like, I don't and think like so. That's a bad take. Like, Southern hip-hop has take. kind of taken that prime spot of being, like, the region for hip-hop. Well, I could agree with you. I do think that you're still seeing incredible groups, like, example, Griselda come out of, of Buffalo. Of course. Like, maybe, the, and there's still a lot of fantastic stuff coming out of New you York. Have stuff. Nas, you have Nas, you have Jay-Z, you have Billy Woods, you have Joey Badass, you have Sky Zoo, ASAP Rocky, Chef G, Busy Banks, Nicki Minaj, Lil TG, Ice Spice, and that's one thing I wanted to ask you about is that I feel like the most, like, popping or trending sound right now for New York is more of that Brooklyn drill sound, even though... It's not as much as it was in like 2020, but I do want to give respect to guys like Chef G that are really carrying out that wave and kind of giving even Fabio adding to the New York DNA of hip hop, you know, to what a I mean? certain extent. Yeah, but ultimately I'm going with Nas on this. I mean, there's no one that has his longevity. I mean, it's been a lock now for maybe four plus decades at this point. And I mean, like even looking at Nas. Who is creating album experiences like him? Who has the level of pen that what he has right now? And even at that, I mean, he's in the latter half of his career and still dropping album of the year contenders. So it's very hard to knock him off yeah, for that. So, some things just don't change. I mean, Nas is still on top of New York. I mean, the, his ability to be able to rap over these classic boom bap beats, but also these more modern beats is so impressive. And like you said, he's dropping so many albums in such a short amount of time and they're all fucking fire. Magic, Kings of Z2. I also had like, Joey and Bully, uh, Billy Wood Woods actually as like my contender is up to them. Billy Woods is a big contender because when you look at his run since like 2019, he's been super active, given us projects um, like Haram with Arm and Hammer, given us albums like Atheops or something like Church, which I just revisited. And I have to say his ability to point to, to like to I would say 
create these like vivid pictures and realistic poetry. It's really mind blowing, bro. It is mind blowing. No one's doing it like him because the verses are so dense and complex, but yet they stick with you. Bro. I would also bring Conway the Machine into this conversation. I know he's from Buffalo, but he is a part of the New York scene. That whole state is absolutely thriving right now. So I mean, listen, those would probably be my contenders, but Nas ultimately. We're gets agreeing it. on fucking everything. I'm not liking this, bro. I want, I want some adversity. <laughs> what, okay, what do you got for um, Georgia? Is it even a competition at this point? For Please Georgia, tell me. I mean, I just want to say that I think they have the best hip hop scene in 2023. Like they're oh, really the biggest trend setters and really influencing hip hop the most out of any other state in my opinion we have people like Playboy Cardi 2 Chains, Lil Yachty, Ken Carson Destroy Lonely, Gucci Mane Offset, Quavo, Future, Young Thug Gunna, Lil Baby, Jid Kenny Mason, 21 Savage, Young Nudie Earth Gang, T. Childish T. Gambino, Run the Jewels. Like there is some Childish there's... Gambino. I, I thought was more in the uh, in the California state. I huh? mean, like because when I was doing my research, you could either put him in each one. I also saw his name pop up in a lot of lists for Atlanta scene. I mean, it depends on the way you want to see it. But regardless, though, you are right. The quality is here. Like it's shit's happening hard. right now in Georgia. But you know what's funny though? Is yeah. that I know what you're about to say, but it's just funny that it's like Atlanta is known for their trap sound, obviously, and the guy that's at the top of the pyramid for Atlanta and Georgia as a whole. Not even, not even a trap artist? It's J.I.D. Yeah, J.I.D. is going to be an automatic lock here. I mean, especially after the Forever story. And even if you want to compare the numbers at this point, look at his monthlies, bro. Like, he is absolutely dominating at the moment. Um, There's really no one making music like him, even on a skill level. Like, who are you going to put up against J.I.D. Future? But what would you mad if, would you know? you mad if someone said, like, oh, old baby's the face of Atlanta. Like, he deserves well, to I be... Well, I mean, like, the face and who's the best are completely yeah. different conversations. Like, who's the most popular and who's getting the biggest push? Yeah, you could say it's a little baby but i mean go through it's only me and like trying to find a bit of stimulation in there you probably won't yeah. you know so i would give it to gid ultimately I, I think it is jid just because he just keeps moving higher and higher up the hip-hop hierarchy from becoming a double xl freshman to getting signed to dreamville to having um you know his musical evolution to dropping what might be a classic album with the forever story to even getting people saying that he's better than his mentor j cole like those conversations are real bro they're happening in real time and it's pretty shocking so um i think jid just must have this rhyme book filled with gold bro because there's never a single line word or verse that's wasted bro it's always heat the concepts are there uh, and he just raps like an alien bro like it's not even normal uh, yeah it's not it's normal not. so listen i think jid is definitely a lock for georgia but also a th- solid singer which makes him the best all around i think out of that scene uh, that but could be considered as next well next up florida so listen this florida scene is very interesting because there's a lot of talent here like i mean you got ski mask you got rick ross who is technically not from florida but whatever he brands himself as a florida rapper you also got kodak in there you have snot but realistically you could go through the whole like florida scene once again but it's gonna come down to denzel like i really do think denzel is the best florida you're making this right sound now. like it's so easy but, but it is easy the though. florida scene is so interesting just because like it really got hot during that soundcloud era and i feel like they just they've been able to certain artists like kind of catapult such a unique sound when it comes to like the quick pace flows um rapping about like party vibes and also a lot of pain rap and i feel like the most influential artist has been Kodak Black when you're looking at other people emerging out of the scene like Spotem Gotem, like Hot Boy, for example. Like some of the the more popping artists now, really influenced by Kodak. And Kodak is still the biggest hit maker out of the scene, still the biggest artist. He's just missing the fucking albums, bro. Like he is. You you got a little big pock and like painting pictures from like five years ago, but if I'm gonna bet on a Kodak experience, album experience, versus like a Denzel album experience, it's never gonna like it's really never gonna be say, a, but even a at, but, but even at that, like looking at Denzel's influence in the Florida scene with Raiders Clan, like I mean, it, that's huge. I mean, even looking at what he was doing with Melt My Ice Your Future in 2022, Unlock Zoo. I mean, going back to Taboo Imperial, um, his mixtape runs, like he is really on a flawless run right now. And skills and capabilities, who's really gonna come next to him? I, I no, listen. No out, weak out, of albums, every, out of everyone he, that I'm seeing on this list right now, Lou, I'm being quite honest with you. I genuinely do not think that anyone touches Denzel Curry as far as skills and capability. Goes. I, I, I just love this scene because you look at them and like every artist here is so original. They all bring like their own flavor and like, their own like quirkiness. And 
it's just it's awesome to see. But yeah, I mean, like you said, Denzel can bring you screamo rap, can bring you melodic rap, he can bring you lyrical rap. Like he fits into every lane, and he's easily the best rapper out of here. But next up, let's go into Illinois. And this one was tough. I'm not gonna lie to you. This one's you think it's the hardest one? Ah, uh, listen, because the thing is, I think I had the hottest take here, and I'm not choosing Kanye here. I'm being honest with you, bro. I didn't go with the Kanye Who one. Who would Illinois. choose Kanye, and, bro? For, come for on. what Illinois man? Come on, like I think right for, now in 2023, there would be a lot of people that would have Kanye West maybe. at the front runner. Not their me. stuff, especially after Donda. I mean, listen, this is the reason why I didn't choose Kanye for this one, okay? And I think legacy wise and everything, like you can't touch him when it comes to this. But current form right now, especially after those Donda 2 sessions and the bit of bloat on Donda, and you could argue Jesus is King, it's a bit more of a wide open race than people make it seem. Now, who does it narrow down to? I think that you have a lot of people that could fit into this conversation. You have someone like Chief Keef with his output and his, let's say, legacy that he's left on. I still didn't ah, include him. Nah. Really came down to two rappers for me, and that is Saba and Lupe Fiasco. I really narrowed it down to them too, but ultimately I went with Lupe, Lupe Fiasco. I think that he's the best rapper right now out of what Chicago. What makes you take him over Saba? Because I just I've been loving Saba's willingness to to take risks, especially with his different vocal performances and how you know, how much quality he's released. He hasn't dropped many albums, but when you're looking at a few good things, when you're looking at the Bucketless Project, when you're looking at Care For Me, I mean, it's been quite a fucking run. It has been, it, and I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I have them at a one-two split. On my dock here, if I were to show you my sheet, it would be Lupe Fiasco slash Saba, but ultimately, I still do think that Lupe Fiasco is a better writer than Saba. I do think that looking at 2022, Joe Music and Zion was a better album than Few Good Things. Um, when you have to look at, let's say, the careers and the longevity, Lupe is still going strong, but Saba's the front runner, bro. Like, Saba's really there. Like, he really is there, and he could be the next face of Chicago. Another rapper that I took into consideration was Chance the Rapper, but the issue is, is that he still has yet to make his comeback. I just feel like we're, we're stuck in a mode of, like, respect your elders. Like, we're kind of going for all the old heads as winners But, I mean, for even this. look at the recent but, picks. I mean, but looking at someone like Lupe Fiasco... Joe Music and Zion was an album of the year contender. So was Few Good Things. But I still do think that lyrically... I think we're forgetting about gig. someone, though. No Name is really up there. Like, when you're talking about just... She hasn't released in a Musically, while, poetically, like, she's astounding. And just, like, that I'm spoken down for the word album. poetry I, I background, like, that she brings in. But you're right. She doesn't have the developed catalog enough for us to see. And she hasn't dropped in, like, fucking five years. So. It's a long time. But I'm yeah. super excited for her album that's apparently coming mm. this year. So we'll see what happens. It, it is that. Lupe, though. Like, I, I'm trying to, like, just fucking <laughs> pick at straws here. But Sabo came close. But Lupe just... He just demands, like... The respect. This intellectuality, bro, out of a listener. Yeah, absolutely. The richest concept albums imaginable. He's still the one. Um, but let's move on now to Michigan. And this is really a popping scene right now. I've been loving um, just to listen to kind of the dark, ominous atmospheres that they all seem to have. Like, there seems to be a really core sound to it, like these dark piano melodies. Also, so many rappers kind of throwing out a bunch of outlandish punchlines in quick succession. Um, a lot of comedic rap also coming out of people like Baby Tron, for example. But when we look at the biggest names, we do have Baby Tron. We do have Baby Face Ray. We do have Eminem. We do have Big Sean. We do have T Grizzly, 42 Doug. The price to 5'9 is in that conversation. NF also. Danny Absolutely. Brown, Sada Baby. There's a lot. I'm ultimately going with Boldy James, though. I think Boldy James is the best current rapper out of Detroit right now um, and out of Michigan. I mean, listen, it's definitely like not Eminem, bro. Like, I, I feel like that's the thing we're going to see in the comments the most. And like to every stand that's saying that, like just roll up your Slim Shady posters that have like the fucking hockey mask, bro, and store them away <laughs> until he actually comes out with good music. You know what I mean? Like we have to put the he bias hasn't dropped, aside. Listen, he hasn't dropped in three years. The last drop was extremely underwhelming. The track record has been a bit weak. I mean, even the features that he's been dropping, like it feels like he's forcing himself to rap to a certain extent. And if this was like all time, like not current form, I mean, dude, it would be a shame to put yeah. anyone else besides Eminem. But, but why not Royce the 5'9"? Because he's someone that I, I was like really having that toss-up between him and Boldy. But, I mean, besides the book of Ryan, he hasn't dropped anything. The allegory. Recently. The allegory oh, was a true. great he album. the allegory in 2020. And he so produced yeah, for, that himself, bro. That's very true. It was true. really well written. I, I just, like, I feel right now, yeah, you could make the argument for Royce. I really do feel like you could make a strong argument for Royce. I just feel like looking back at some of my favorite projects after the past couple of years, I mean, where do you want to start with Boldy? You could go into Fair Exchange. You could go for The Price of Tea in China. You could go for Bo Jackson. This guy is literally delivering quality on every single front. And what's cool about Boldy is that 
He's probably like one of the best lyricists out of Griselda right now, if not the best in my opinion. And when you have that sort of status, I do feel like you're on top of the game. And looking at Royce, like he's had his time to tread waters, you know, like he's done it. Like I feel I, like I, for I currently, with you. I feel like I, you I, have I feel like album wise, like this is the, like the best form that Royce has ever been in. But I'm just trying to play devil's advocate because it is a close race, but it is Boldy James, bro. I mean, just all, of the, trying to bamboozle all me? of the choices he's making, who he's aligning himself with, if it's Griselda or if it's an amazing low-key producer like Nicholas Craven or if it's him going out of his way to get Jay Dilla beats to rap over. Like, this guy is just on a fucking mission to dominate, and that's exactly what he's doing. One of the best rappers out the underground right now, and um, stylistically so different from everything else in Detroit. Yeah, extremely monotone. With his foot. It's crazy because, like, you listen to the Detroit sound right now and what's emerging, let's say, out of the younger kids, and you listen to Boldy James, and it's a completely different mm -hmm. thing stylistically. So I would go with Boldy yep. James. But let's go on to Texas because... Because Texas has a massive roster as well. Every pun intended there. So, Lou, take us through some names, bro. Yeah, Texas is huge. I mean, we have uh, Travis Scott, Megan The Stallion, Kevin Abstract, Don Tolliver, Max O'Cream, MGK, Lecrae, uh, most Post Malone, Bobby Sessions, and Ian Dior. And I mean, Travis Scott is obviously the biggest guy out of Houston, maybe the most unique sounding rapper out of Houston. But is he still that guy? After yeah. not dropping for five years, because we use that excuse with no name. Don't forget. Brother, he had three number one singles in 2021. Like, he's been Forget dropping. the numbers. Fuck the numbers yeah, here. Yeah, hey, it. I'll go to Mafia. I'll go to Escape Land. Like, he's <laughs> had his time. I mean, realistically, he's been even looking at what he did on Heroes and Villains. Like, the guy's been prominent. You know, it's not like he went completely Kevin silent. Abstract, though, I think needs to be considered just for his amazing work with Brock Hampton, as his well as catalog. his solo catalog, stuff like Arizona Baby. I also feel like... Max O'Cream could be in this conversation. Max O'Cream is in this conversation, yes, Max bro. Like he's proving conversation. to everyone right now that you can drop a trap album and still have poignant messages and still, you know, reveal Brandon a lot Banks about was a yourself. Really solid list, and so was Weight of the World, but you just dropped, bro. That was hard. That's too. very true. I, I feel and, like I feel like this is a close race. I feel like, especially for Max o Cream, you could put him into this conversation. But and I love the fact too that it's like you know when you listen to someone like Max o Cream, you get that old UGK or Scarface vibe from him in terms of voice wise and also how great he is at storytelling who do you so, think is the best rapper ever from texas though i would go probably with scarface out of yeah, the I, that I, I, saw, think it, I think it is out scarface. of the research i probably had to do for these notes the best name that i see that i saw pop up was definitely scarface but travis scott's a lock <sighs> come on bro who, kevin who, abstract is the most like all around <laughs> guy when you're looking at him bouncing from like hip hop to pop, to you already disrespected Travis Scott in the rappers cards. Okay, don't be doing this again. Could we just lock this? Max O'Cream is my pick. Max O'Cream, bro. You think Max O'Cream is a Cream, better rapper than Travis? Scott? Right now, currently, Travis can drop the album. You can drop Utopia this year, and everything changes and goes back to the restored order of how they you should be. You genuinely think Max, right o now, Max O'Cream is making better than music? He than dropped Travis in 2019. Scott. He dropped in 2020, and I think that those albums were fire. And I do think that because of his activity and how great he's been rapping, yes, I'm going Max O'Cream. Sheesh. <laughs> okay. You just said he was a contender, bro. He was now you're laughing he, at he me. Was, there's a difference between a contender and the winner. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> All right, uh, hold on. Wait. Just between you and I, do you genuinely believe that Max O'Cream makes better the music than like Travis Scott? Like overall or right now? Like I, right. Well, I mean, r right now, I mean, the guy fucking dropped in 2022. I mean, not 2022, but dropped in 2020. Like, come on. I'll give you. I'll give you one chance to retract that statement. <laughs> do you, are you saying that he is better than Travis Scott? I just Scott? feel shitty about using that excuse in other states where we're like, well, this. Person hasn't but dropped bro, in five I just years. gave and no, but this guy Travis Scott hasn't dropped in five years. I mean, a solo album, but the guy's been prominent. He's been on heavy feature runs. And He's how been great on really was Escape Plan? Mafia was fire, but like, how great was Escape Plan? The, it's the, not the, crazy, but I mean, like, it's still up the standard. Like, if I had to go through every single Maxo Cream feature the past four years, I'd probably find blemishes, but I haven't done that. I'm going so Maxo I mean, Cream. Fuck it. Let's move All on. Right. Next up, we have Tennessee. And it's interesting because, like, historically, the main rappers from Tennessee have always come from either Memphis or Nashville. Like, those are really the two hub cities. And the rappers that we have are Moneybag Yo, Juicy J, NLE Choppa, Isaiah Rashad, Key Glock, Push Icy, Glorilla, Yellow Wolf, uh, Young Buck, and Yo Gotti. And I definitely feel like the biggest doing it right now are Key Glock and Moneybag Yo. Key Glock. Um, when you're looking at the flows and cadences and how they're really carrying that old 3-6 Mafia sound, I'm loving what they're bringing to the table. And Moneybag Yo is really my close number two to this race. A Gangsta's Pain was an amazing album. I think that vocally he just brings in so much energy 
and he's he's really gifted, bro. As an MC, no, he, is he really doesn't get gifted. enough love. Like he doesn't just make street rap or pop rap. Like this guy could actually fucking spit. Well, Keisha was fire, bro. That was a massive project for not project, excuse me, single. Time so, today, bro. Absolutely. Just say that. Like there's just there's so many bangers Even off that Kate album. Even Glock, I feel like is getting a lot of praise, especially after Glaucoma too. That was another runner up in this conversation with me, especially for current. But I think ultimately it's gonna go to Isaiah Rashad for me. I do believe that he is the best rapper out of Tennessee and. It's crazy. He's not even from Memphis. I, I can't. What city is he from? Chattanooga, I think. Could it be Chattanooga? Yes, yeah, okay, because I was doing research on it. I think there are only like 150,000 people. Oh, in the fuck. City, Small which city. Is, which is pretty cool. But I mean, yeah, album concepts like The House is Burning. You know, I want to talk about Sylvia Demo, The Sun's Tie Raid. Um, and what's crazy, too, is that people don't often attribute let's say isaiah rashad to you know that tennessee sort of memphis rap it's more of like the west coast sort of cloud rap but no the guy's really from tennessee and he actually holds it close to his home like close to his heart like he often raps about his hometown often raps about his upbringing you know he's done stuff with duke deuce for example who's super prominent within the scene yeah so i mean I, yeah I, I would go isaiah yeah rashad. i just feel like isaiah floats on beats like no one else from tennessee bro just like that laid back addictive crooning that he brings to the table, yes, the sir. loose song structure, like there's just there's a different feeling, a unique feeling listening to Isaiah's music. And like you said, who's really beating that fucking catalog, bro? I don't think so. Nobody. I'm Isaiah sure. Rashad is the lock. We got two more states to go. Let's kick things off with Louisiana and um legendary hip hop scene, really known for the bounce sound, really known for their influences of jazz and of blues music that has been brought into a lot of deliveries of artists like NBA Youngboy, for example. But speaking of Youngboy, we have him, we have Wayne, Boosie Badass, Currency, Autumn, Kevin Gates, Jay Electronica, Summers, and Fredo Bang. And this is the easiest fucking state to decide upon, bro. What do you have? Fredo Bang, bro, is who I have. You? <laughs> who, who do you got? Fredo Bang, you? Listen, I, I know I'm... <laughs> listen, okay, I, I, I no, think no, it's... Wait, I think you, it's you, you're not going Wayne? Are you out of your mind? I, I was going to put Jay Electronica in this conversation as a really close second. Like, I would ultimately... Like, you could ask me on a different day than now, and I could probably go with Jay Electronica. You have to stop with, like, the Wayne fell off narrative. Like it's <laughs> I, I know, but it's not the Wayne fell off narrative. Like, he dropped a better album than him this decade. I could argue that he's put up the same amount of fantastic features as Wayne this decade. In current rapping form, like, Jay Electronica is just as skilled, if not more skilled, skilled than Wayne as an MC, and we're not talking about his back catalog. Well, what has JLX done since they're in the, they're in the testimony? Okay, he, he had the feature on Donda, okay? I mean, cool yeah, feature. but I mean, like, he, you know how he is, that he plumps his head out every once in a while. I just do feel like once you do get there, you're getting verses from God himself. Like, that's the thing with Jay Electronica is that when he comes through, he never misses. Like, he has, like, that sharpshooter, 100% green bean every single time that he decides to lay vocals down on a track. The thing with Wayne is that, yes, obviously, I do feel like... Wayne is in super nice form right now. Like, he has had a bit of a decline, but he's still there. He's prominent. But most recent albums, I'm going a written testimony. Current Look at form, the Carter 5, though. Don't sleep on the Carter 5. I mean, that was just two years before written testimony. And I get what you're saying. JLEC like does have those fucking nonsensical moments of brilliance, bro, where yeah, you're like, does. what is this guy doing? But. They come so far and few between. You know what I mean? Like, it's so rare to even get a JLX verse. I do feel like there is a debate, though, for Lil Wayne. Wayne ultimately, is still carrying. Uh, ultimately, still carrying we could it. go Lil Wayne. Ultimately, I'll see. We don't have to go anything, bro. You want to hey, choose JLX we'll and, do and have that stupid but, take? You could do it. Uh, bro, you're going Maxo Cream over Travis Scott. I don't think I dropped <laughs> so any. So you're choosing JLX? <laughs> Um, no, I'd go ultimately Lil Wayne, but I do feel like there's a major conversation to be had for Jay Electronica. I had like a whole paragraph explaining <laughs> You're why. You're scared for the heat of saying Jay Electronica, aren't you? Uh, brother, I've gotten heat on too many of these episodes to care at this point. So, I mean, listen, let's keep but going. I feel like that's where your heart's at, but anyways. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I feel, uh, no, Lil Wayne's one of my favorite rappers of all time. I would still go Lil Wayne, but I do feel like currently Jay Electronica's on the same level. Okay. Let's go to North Carolina, and this one was truly the easiest. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I think this was the easiest state um you want to go through them actually you have them on your we got paper. j cole we got the baby we got rhapsody we got stunner for vegas moray tusi loot fonte mavi and bob um it was actually hard to like compile like the most notable list for the for this uh, state just because it is more of an emerging hip-hop state i feel like like it's only like in modern times as of now that it's really been blossoming um rhapsody is a good contender though 
Rhapsody is fantastic one of the best yeah, MCs right now and truly a student of the game. Eve is such a great album. Um, and yeah, just a great catalog overall. Corday comes into conversation, I think. Um, but his origin, like I think he was born in NC, but like he grew up like somewhere else. From what I, from what I saw, if we were to consider him though, let's say within North Carolina, I probably would put him into conversation. But yeah. still, like he has work to do. Rhapsody He's still, still above. Yeah, he'd still put Rhapsody over Corday. That's yeah. right. That's a good take. Loot is maybe above Corday also. It's wow, kind of that's close. That's interesting. Well, Goldmouth was fire. Yeah, Goldmouth was really good. The song GED was on replay for me, and I think also twenty twenty one. What was the yeah. other album? West nineteen ninety six. Yes, that's a fantastic Part project two. as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I also had De Niro Ferrar actually. That yeah. was pretty jokes. Remember we did an interview with him on yeah, IG Live. Yeah, you went on IG Live with him. Yeah, I but that. I had gone back to his twenty twenty project to give it a spin just because like I'm like, listen, I'm probably going J Cole here, but fuck it, I might as well revisit the scene, and he's a fantastic rapper from North Carolina. You guys should definitely check it out, but could we just lock in J. Let's Cole? lock in J. Cole and yeah, bro, that, that sums up the rapper from every state. This is probably the easiest episode I ever had to do. It, it, like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we kind of agreed on pretty much every single one except for Texas, um, but another cool state that would have been, you know, dope to talk about was Pennsylvania. Um, there's also going to be, what the fuck else is there, bro? I feel like there's a lot of good there, emergency. There's other low-key states that we just, we're not thinking of now. But, but that's it, guys. Drop them in the comment section because I'd love to revisit this. It's always fun to go through the demographics and just see, like, well, technically geographics at this point. Yeah. To just see, like, you know, who's the best out of this and who's the best out of that. So, guys, let us know where we got it right. Let us know where we fucked up. And listen, if you're enjoying this content, we are doing it on a weekly basis. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching this. And we'll catch you in the next episode.